At the end of the long winters, the sucker fish runs would occur, and that was a time of plenty for the Klamath tribal people. If this fish should go away and no longer exist, they say, then the Klamath people will no longer exist. First, I'd like to welcome everybody to the homeland of the Klamath tribes. Tonight we're going to be working with Chwam, which is the Lost River Sucker, Cop 2, which is a short-nosed sucker, and the Yen, which is a Klamath large-scale sucker. There's about 5,400 tribal members who um, genuinely care about these fish. So you're, you're doing a great thing. Lost River suckers and short-nosed suckers only live in slow water lake areas. Because of that, when the reservoirs behind Iron Gate, Copco, and J.C. Boyle are drained and the dams are removed, we'll be converting lake and reservoir habitat to a river. That's incredibly beneficial for salmon and steelhead. However, for the Lost River suckers and the short-nosed suckers, it will be a habitat that they're no longer able to persist. Because of that, Res, working with the Klamath tribes, the Kruk tribe, and a number of our partners are trying to move as many of the short-nosed and lost river suckers out of the project area reservoirs before the drawdown begins. Lost river suckers and short-nosed suckers have been in decline in the upper basin for decades. It's so bad that at this point, scientists and tribal members are concerned that the populations are on the brink of extinction. I was raised in a subsistence lifestyle, so it wasn't unheard of for my dad to come home and say, you know, we're having sucker. That was before we as a tribe determined that, hey, there's so few in number that we would no longer be able to fish the sucker fish. So I'd like to see my children or my grandchildren one day be able to eat these sucker fish, something that we have done from time immemorial. Sucker in here. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, you found he's you one found the, the giant. Old, one of the older ones, so. Big short nose. Awesome. Oh. So overnight, crews are catching fish, and any of the target species that we get, we'll bring them back towards shore in net pens, where they'll stay overnight until we can process them in the next day. Three seven six. Nail tubercles. Nail tubes. And go large scale. Large scale. Part of what we're doing when we capture the target fish Perfect. is that we'll take a fin clip, and the genetic sample will go to the U.S. Abernathy Lab, where its genetics will be analyzed. The unique thing about this is it helps us build out a genetic library of the fish we're capturing and moving from this reservoir. And as those fish go to the Klamath Tribe's fish rearing facility, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, and the Klamath Tribes will be able to confer and determine if they want to move any of those fish into parts of the recovery population, or if it's better to keep them in the fish rearing facility for purposes of management there. This is a really unique opportunity because otherwise these fish, which have washed down from Upper Klamath Lake, would only remain in the project area reservoirs and would not actually have the ability to contribute to the recovery population in Upper Klamath Lake. Fish from J.C. Boyle Reservoir will be going to the Klamath Tribe's fish rearing facility and the fish that are coming out of the California reservoirs will be going to the Lower Klamath National Wildlife Refuge. 
These fish live for a long time. They can live for three, four decades each. And so the effort's worth it because moving those fish out of the reservoirs gave them a chance to be a part of the population that they had been removed from for several decades. I'm really glad I can be in this effort because I believe wholeheartedly that every fish counts and that any fish will make a difference. That's gonna be good. Okay, awesome. Yeah, good one.